What's going on, FB Live? Yes, we're on. I did not. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, well, we're in the process of. Not having a place to live. <laughs> That's what we're in the process of. Yeah, so we're up here at my mother's for a couple of days until they get the house ready. And uh, Sugar Bear is sort of discouraged right now. Yeah, well, more yesterday than today. Okay, I'm, so I'm, do I'm you want to explain to the people? Why I'm discouraged? Yes. You told me not to put it on the timeline while you're discouraged, so just explain um, to the people what's going on. Um, you know, the discouraged is, is a strong word. I, I'm I'm feeling the emotion of mm -hmm. being uncomfortable, being uncomfortable. You know, when people say, oh, you know, come on out your comfort zone. Be careful coming out the comfort zone. Come out slowly because there may be some things in there that you're just not comfortable with. So, um, I have been out of my comfort zone since what, March? Mm -hmm. March. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, lived in a place for seven years. I've only moved probably three times in my life, mm -hmm. and I didn't. I had my place taken from me. You know, they sold it and whatever the reason was, and I had to do things quick, fast, in a hurry. Which we're living what the results of quick, fast, in a hurry are. You end up being told one thing, and then another thing, and then another thing, and then you're still finding your, um, laying your head somewhere that's not your home, that's not your final place, and it's very, very hard. It's just hard. You know, I was thinking about how just in the city, you know, people only talk about their struggle when it's over, and they want to give you the praise report, which is not bad, but um, it's difficult to still think of God as a loving, providing, more than able God when there's so many things you don't have. That's hard. And I guess that's my lesson. To be able to still say, hey, he's a fantastic God. He's got me. He's got you. Um, and of all things, can I talk about who encouraged me? Mm -hmm. Besides you. Uh, my friend Rania encouraged me. And... It was the weirdest way. I wasn't expecting it. Mm -hmm. But basically, she's in Atlanta doing worse than I am. She literally is um, had lost her job after she moved there and moved into her new place. And she's behind on her car payment. And they're literally down to eating every other day. And she's like, Judy, I've already lost 10 pounds. And I'm listening to this person, I'm like, okay, you know you're not about to open your mouth and say, I'm having a problem when somebody is having a worse problem. But she said, well, no, tell me, I can hear it in your voice, I can hear your mood, what's going on? And so I told her, I said, man, another week. We were supposed to be in here Saturday. We're not there. We won't get another truck till Saturday. We won't get the extra, you know, volunteer movers until Saturday. So I have to figure out where I'm going for another week. And she asked me about my son. She said, how is Andrew doing? And I said, well, you know, Andrew's doing really, really well. He seems to be rolling with all these different punches, all these different changes. He's not freaking out. He's not having a meltdown. He's not doing this. And she began to encourage me. And she was more excited than I was. She was like, do you realize what you have done? Mm. And I was like, no. What did I do? What did I do? She said, do you remember... This is the child that couldn't speak at three and four. This is the child that they said wouldn't do this, wouldn't do that. This is the child that didn't like change, didn't love the routine, didn't like to not know what was going on. Mm -hmm. And you're telling me that from week to week, when you don't even know what's going on, he's been like a rock. And I said, yep. And I said, we were, remember we were in the car and I said, Andrew, you are doing so different from where you were. And for those who do or do not know, my son is on the autism spectrum. And he was a child that liked routine. If you were going to introduce something new, you needed to do it the year before or six months in advance. Um, it was the same foods, the same clothes, the same routine of everything. 
And so for him to be in this position, and she said, do you know what you've done? And I said, what did I do, Renita? She said, you've raised a man. Mm. She said, you raised a man. And she went back to when I first met her. We met 17 years ago. We were working at the same job. And um, that was when my second son began to have some issues. And I, she says, I remember. She worked in one department. I worked in another. But we would go to lunch. And she says, I remember the day you walked in and you said, I'm leaving this job. And she was like, what are you going to do? I said, well, my kids need me. My kids need really a lot of support and if I don't do it no one else is going to do it and then they're going to become a burden on society or whatever so um, she says I remember you walked in you told me that then you walked into the um, manager's office the general manager for the business and you said look um, I'm giving you two weeks notice I'm leaving I remember she says she eavesdropped the conversation she said, you were like, the guy was like, do you have some place to go? No, I don't have any place to go. Do you, you have another job? No, I don't have another job. Well, what are you going to do? I don't know, but I think God's got it, and I think he's going to help me figure it out. And she said, Judy, that was 17 years ago. That was so long ago that you left corporate America. Good money and the future of making even better money to take care of your two sons. And at the time, it was single-handed. I was by myself. And she said, look what you've done. You got one in California working, doing his artwork, living his life. You got another one that his handling changed better than anybody ever thought. And she said, I know it doesn't look like you have a lot. You don't have a lot of money. You don't have a roof over your head. You don't have your home, you know. But you did something that is priceless. You raised a man. And that encouraged me more than anything on the planet right now. It made me feel so, so good. Because a lot of times, and we talk about this, a lot of times people look at what? Material things. Mm -hmm. People look at material things to say that they're successful, right? Mm -hmm. Or they look at titles, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> or positions. Mm -hmm. And my best position has been mother. My second best position is going to be wife. Mm. But those things are priceless. So we call this getting to know each other because he had never seen me go through a little bit of sadness. He had never seen me. And his brand of comedy is not funny. He cracks jokes and it makes you feel bad. <laughs> and I was like, if you're trying to help me, that joke just fell flat. That didn't work. So we're getting to know how I handle you know, disappointment, setbacks. I can tell that when he gets a setback, he wants to laugh at it. He wants to find a funny joke, funny way of looking at it. Mm -mm. See, the difference is... Okay, what's the difference here? The know? difference is, <laughs> is that I choke in order for you to laugh. So when you're down, that makes me down. Yes. But somebody has to laugh. Somebody has to has to be the laughter of whatever you go through. Somebody has to have a sense of humor regardless of what they go through because what you got to look at is somebody is going through twice as worse than you. No, you don't have a roof over your head. Yeah, we had a setback, but you got a roof over your head because there's a roof right here. <laughs> I know. You know, versus somebody that we might be at Speed Street a little bit later, somebody might be in the streets trying to ask for a dollar or trying to ask for a penny and don't have no roof over their head or don't have no idea of where they're going. You know, have no and mm -hmm. and have no control over their situation. But whether they ask you for a dollar and you give it to them or not, they still got a smile on their face. They still are going. They still keep going on. They still got a belief. Some of them, have, some of them don't even have a belief in God, but they still keep going. They still keep rising, regardless. You having faith in God, and you know, having having all knowing that God is in control. Because any circumstances that we go through, we have to understand. 
that we have no control over what we go through. That's true. That there's somebody above that's in all control if you ask him to take control. Now, if you don't ask him, the rest is on you. But if you want to rely on him and you want to trust him to take control of a situation, then you have your faith and you put all your trust in God in order to do that. I talked to my mama about that this morning. A lot of times we have to have patience upon him. It's not our patience. It's patience trusting in him. Mm-hmm. You know, I you, can, it. <laughs> you know, that's that's just all it is to it. So no, the the house ain't ready. But we got to thank God that we saw the things that we saw in order for that house to be prepared to where people can come in to where God is ready for people to come in so that we can bless those people in that household. See, people, you have to understand something. Just because you rush into something or you're anxious to get into something, it doesn't necessarily mean that God is anxious to get into God it. Is God is anxious, anxious for you to nothing. get into it. God is never anxious for okay. me, which is true. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, regardless of whether you rush or whether you sit still just waiting, everything is in God's timing. And so you have to be assured that if you're going to let God take control of things, you got to let God take full control of things. So that's why you have to have a sense of humor. You have to, whether you're corny. <laughs> He's corny. No. You don't know whether no. you're corny. He's corny. Or, or however it may be. <laughs> you have to have a sense of humor to whatever you go through within your lifetime. Because I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you something. What you going to tell me? Just because it don't feel good, just because it don't seem good, doesn't mean that it's good. It's not good. See, it's not good in your terms. It's not good the way you feel. But it's good to God because God has the last results. God knows what's about to happen. So you talk about your testifying turning into your testimony. But you got to trust in God for your testimony. Mm. That's true. Okay? Okay. Yes. <laughs> Anything else? So, Anything that's else? why. No, I'm just saying that's <laughs> why. That's why I'm patient with everything. Just because we're in my mother's house and I've been in my mama's house for four years, that don't necessarily mean that. I'm complacent or I'm comfortable. But I realized that everything was in God's timing. Ain't nothing, I talked about it the other day, whether people were listening or not, I believe yesterday. Nothing that happened to me within the last two or three years were planned. Nothing, the marriage, let's just say the marriage wasn't planned. Of course we know that. The move between me and you, you moving from Rama Road or whatever Mm -hmm. and transitioning, that wasn't planned. Mm -hmm. And the move into Hidden Valley wasn't planned. Mm -hmm. The move in order for me to leave Mama House was not planned. It was not planned. Okay. From leaving from Mama's house into us moving in together as a married couple, that was not planned. No. Nothing was ever planned. So God made it to where we both, in our own little ways, got out of our comfort zone. Yeah. Yeah, he did. So, therefore, of course, when you first get out of your comfort zone, it's going to be what? Uncomfortable. 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 Yeah. You got your own situation of dealing with it. You got your own way of dealing with it. 
I got my own way of dealing with it. You know, mm-hmm. regardless, I can't look at mama, whether we get on each other's nerves or, <laughs> you know, whether she's ready to chase me with a broom. But every morning or, or every night, I can't look at her at this chair when I come in from work and, you know, just see her laid out, sleep on that little chair right there, this chair right here, every every morning come to work she's at this chair right here just waiting for me to come home but you know that's no more right i have a family now you know we're about to make some kids oh my goodness. you know oh, and that's 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 even more uncomfortable for you because why because you feel no, I'm just saying you feel at a certain time it's it's at the it's, I'm not uncomfortable. We'll see how that happens. Well, yeah, because you'll be at a certain age or whatever you feel that it's it's possible but it's impossible, right? We shall see. We'll see. But God is about to bless you with twenty kids. Oh my not twenty. Please God do not bless me with twenty. With twenty. You might have be lots 40. of sons and daughters already. Yeah, but I'm talking about real bella just coming out of the woodwork. Okay. You know, like what we just saw, you know, coming out of the woodwork. <laughs> yeah, we just saw that already. Yeah. Oh, my God. You know what I'm saying? Don't give me a flashback. You know, I'll be okay. Just coming out of the woodwork. <laughs> you know, but God allows you to see certain things, you know, in order for you to be it's in his own way and in his own terms. Maybe it's for you to be more appreciative of of things. Maybe, you know, you said you've never been in a position like you are now. Yeah, you've never been in it. Well, maybe it's your time in order to understand what somebody else is about to go through or what your friend is going through right now. You have an understanding on how to deal with that. So you have an understanding through your own faith and through your own relationship on how to talk to people. Most people don't know how or understand what others are going through in order to know how to talk to those certain people. That's true. You know, so maybe that's maybe that's God just telling you in other words, well, I'm allowing you to go through this situation so therefore you can help somebody that's going through that situation or somebody that you know close that's going to go through that situation. You'll know how to talk to them. You'll know how to handle that situation. You'll even know how to pray for them whenever they need prayer because you understand. Everybody don't understand what you're going through. There's somebody out there that's not even as blessed, has a husband that that can't even go to the mother-in-law and be like, hey, I need somewhere to lay my head, whether it's uncomfortable I have it may be they don't have them. They don't have that. Mm, I, I, I mean, I realize. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you I from think. up north. Uh-uh. And I swear, let me talk uh-uh. about New York no, for a minute. No, we're not talking about New York. No, we ain't going to talk just, about New you York. You're just jealous. <laughs> <laughs> but go ahead. No, no. I'm, what you're saying, anybody ever felt that sometimes you need to be reminded of something you already know? Because you already saying to me things that I said either to myself or to other people that the thing that you go through is not just for you. We've said that to each other. It's not just for you. It's always for someone else, especially as a believer, as a person who believes in God and Christ. It's always that you'll be there and ready with a word for someone else going through um, what you're going through. So that I know. I'm just saying that it's okay to talk about the uncomfortable portion of it because a lot of times we want to hide mm-hmm. when we're going through a hard time. We want to hide. Well, you do because I swear I wanted to post so bad. I wanted, you know, I was ready to post and you was like, ah, oh, they're going to look at you differently. They never want to No, come I didn't say that. I said no, people they, but they never want to come, come, to, the house, come yeah. to the house. I didn't say anybody, but I don't care. Yeah. I don't care how people look at me. I've been there, done that, a um, long time ago. So I don't care what people. No, I know, I know. But you, you're saying that people won't come to the house. They ought to give them a good reason not to, to not come to, come to the house because you know I wouldn't. If you told me you had a problem like that, I would not come. 
until you had dealt with the problem, to be honest with you. So I don't want that to be in people's minds. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They'll be like, oh, you still got that problem? Oh, you still got that problem? I know how people think. You know how people think. But what I'm saying is, it's okay to talk about how you are dealing with a difficult situation. And if anything, I learned how to do that as an advocate. As a disability advocate, you've got to talk about uncomfortable situations, difficult situations, chronic or long-term situations that may not change. So some of that I knew, it's sort of like taking knowledge that I knew and now applying it to an area that I never had been in. Wrong. But that's a difference between what you study and, and what about, you uh -uh. experience. It's not about studying because I didn't study disability. No, you went through that. Went through yeah, that. you went through so that. So this is taking from, you know, it was like hearing myself talk to me when he was talking to me because that's, I would have done that just in a different area of my life. This area of my life, I've never had any turmoil, never had any issue. So now it's a different area of my life. And that's what God does. I think that's part of the pruning process. I think that's part of the maturation, maturing process in us in Christ is that he's going to continue to say, well, I see you can master that. Let me see if you'll master it over here. Let me see if you'll still feel the same way if I take something that you've never had to deal with. I take something away mm -hmm. that you've never lost before. I've never lost where I was going to lay my head. I always knew where that was going to be. So let me ask you this, right? Mm -hmm. The next time he takes something away from you, oh my goodness. how are you going to handle that the next time? Because he took something major. You've been in a bigger house for seven years you know nobody ever bothered you mm -hmm. you know no you, you know sweet waved song. maybe waved or maybe they didn't wave that type of thing but now you're going to the hood <laughs> you know now you're going into the hood hood you know you might have somebody knocking on your door every five or ten minutes uh -huh. you know i need some sugar you know, you might have some... Actually, I'm kind of excited to have neighbors who actually speak. Yeah, well, you, you're excited I mean, right now. Know, but see, you don't... See, you you're don't excited remember. right now. I don't yeah. Remember, I told you where I lived in Maryland. That was, consi that was considered... They called it the garbage can of Mar uh, Baltimore, where I lived, where I bought my first house. Okay, so... Yeah, I, I understand. So I dealt with the... You know, but I'm just saying, look out the door. Who's that? Yeah. So you're you're going into an environment, even though it's changing. We we see it's changing. It's a lot of peace. But you're going into an environment where I was in the '80s, to where you know you might come inside. You know, you might come in the house one day, and somebody already in the house. You know, and you're like, hey, what are you doing here? Uh -huh. And he's like, oh, I just came in to see if I can find some Kool-Aid or some beer or, you know, something like that. Oh, I was hungry and needing something to eat. Or you might go outside, you know, in the backyard and say, hey, I just want to look in the backyard and somebody laying in your backyard. You know, and you're like, hey, hey, man, I just needed somewhere to sleep. You know, or seven o'clock in the morning you might be on your way to do you know go out and get your biscuit or you know <laughs> go out and make a run or whatever and you know you hear a bunch of shots bam, 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 bam. you might just hear anything in the hood so how are you going to basically handle the transition of you know being around uh elderly people Elderly, may I say elderly? Not necessarily. They well, well, Carca Caucasian, uh, rich, yeah, wealthy. It was, it was a wealthy. Neighborhood. Rich, wealthy, you know, mm -hmm. in a rich, wealthy Caucasian neighborhood who, where people might have looked at you a lot, you know, were afraid to speak to you because of your color. Color. Who might have been, or might just didn't want to speak to you because of your color. Mm -hmm. On to being around people that you haven't seen in the last 20 years every day, just looking at them face to face. How are you going to handle that? Because that's basically out of your comfort zone. So, you know. Not necessarily. This is what I'm trying to tell you. That I spent 
what was it? Um, 2006 to 2010, living in what was considered a hood of Baltimore. And I told you those stories that we had to deal with. We had to deal with drug dealers on the corner. We had to deal with um, violence. We had to deal with threats. We had to deal with a couple of different things. So, um, but I guess what I'm excited about is that one, you and I are together. Mm. You and I both believe very strongly in God. That's very powerful. You know, we're coming into that community to be a light. So we know that there might be some people who don't, um, who are going through all sorts of issues in life. They may be angry as they go through those Some issues. of them, now, now, wait, wait, wait. Listen, I'm from there, so I could talk like that. But this is the this is what I'm telling you. Some of them. Now, there are some people that are very spiritual. There are some people that live good lives. You know, that's, that's you know, real, real blessed. I know my, my brother's parents, they're still there after 30 or 40 plus years and, you know, still look at it as home. So, you know, it's still um, people that's there that's in that environment that are live very wealthy. Now, from the outside looking in, the, of course, you know, the kings and all of that, which all of them wasn't even from the valley. They just came into the valley. But, you know, all of what the news and the media had pictured about Hidden Valley wasn't always Hidden Valley. So go ahead, but go ahead and keep going. What you I don't know what I was saying. I basically about, I was saying that we're going to come across yeah. people who need support in different ways. And whatever we can do, we do it. Mm -hmm. That's all. I'm going to be volunteering probably at the Hidden Valley Elementary School. And Martin Luther King Middle. And we'll see about Martin Luther King Middle. I usually mm -hmm. take the little ones, but we'll see about Martin Luther King Middle. Um, and we'll just we'll be who we are. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that everything that I will see maybe in Hidden Valley, I've seen before. I won't say that. I don't know. But I'm no, not really afraid. No, you haven't. And you, you, we saw that yesterday. You haven't. And, I, you know, I had to pick on you about the New York stories. And I'm from New York, because just like you New Yorkers. New Yorkers all live You know, I'm from dump. New York. I'm they from New York. in the upper... I'm from New and York. And New Yorker people are, they all think we live um, above, above Harlem. They all think we live like 114th Street. That's it. That's the entire city is 114th Street. It's not. Yeah, but y'all come no, here. No, we come here and we say we're from New, New York, York, but we're not saying everything is a hood. And then, I especially when you talk to hood. another New Yorker, 114th, 145th. Okay, well, I live on Twigsbury. What the world are you talking about? I don't know what they're talking but, about. But my point is, the way y'all come the down here. The attitude that you're telling me is, mm -hmm. is that everybody from New York had it rough. The way y'all talk. No. The, when I say I'm arrogance. from New York, when I say I'm from New York, it has nothing to do about I lived in a tough part You just said the other day, last week. When I was telling you that people gonna chase me all around Hidden Valley, I'm from Queens. Now I automatically, I ain't been to New York but twice in my life. I'm automatically looking at Nas and uh, LL Cool J and, and uh, Jamaica no, Queens. Yeah, LL is from Jamaica Queens now. <laughs> Jamaica Nas Queens. is Nas is Queensbridge. Um, you know. Oh, that is. Yeah, Queensbridge. That's the project. You know, yeah, so I'm some forty projects. They have projects, but I'm yeah, just but I'm just say saying it. when when people make that description, especially people from New York come down south and talk their New York slang type thing, you automatically thinking no. that you know no. they know something no. about some hood. No, but you know nothing I about know the hood. Nothing. I grew up in the suburbs, five minutes from JFK Airport, tree line streets. We had a gardener. Um, no, I didn't know anything about the hood. Nothing. It was mm -hmm. the most. If it, and if there was a one, it was a street that my mother would say, "Don't walk down that street. You don't know what's going on in that street." A whole street. It was no hood. Oh, okay. No hood. Okay. Well, the next time I hear somebody talk that New York slang, Find out I'm what calling they're talking all about my. Seriously. No, I'm calling everybody <laughs> I know from New York. 
And I'm not, not everybody I know, because there's some people that claim they're from New York and are really not from New York. The they just lived in New York. New York, when people say, I'm from New York, it doesn't always mean the tough hood thing. Sometimes it just means that we had a more variety of food or, or we had, you know, 7 million people. It's a lot of people. You know, like when people say, oh my goodness, what? the commute was a whole 30 minutes. People from New York are looking at you like, really? How about an hour and a half every day one way? Hour and a half every day yeah, well, one way. You Standing the, on your feet, no, most of it. But if you're in the suburbs, it shouldn't be no problem. No, no that's why you were an hour and a half to get into Manhattan. Oh, okay, you're to get into the city. Get into the city. Okay. So I'm just so I'm trying to tell people, you know, oh my goodness, we have, um, we've had our 22nd murder for the year. When I was a kid, we were dealing with 360 plus murders a year. When I was a kid. Yeah, but you had to look at that on the news because you know nothing about that. Uh, we so didn't see. Yeah, it was all yeah, the news. Yeah, you looked on the news like Mama be doing. Like but it was Mama a lot of murders and there were a lot of places they would tell you, try not to go there. Don't go there. Don't go there. Don't go there. We had a lot of that. Don't do this. Don't go there kind of thing. Okay. So that's where you get. And then, okay, let's be real. When you come into the city, you have to get a kind of tougher demeanor. You have to kind of toughen up, which is not very easy for me because I smile all the time and I say hi to everybody. I'm like, how you doing? I had a friend who lived in the Bronx and she told me, she said, Judy, stop smiling. Stop looking at everybody dead in their eye and stop saying hello to everybody because this ain't the country. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I would go see friends and they would be like, look, can you put a, a mug on? I'm like, what's a mug? I didn't, know what it was. Mean face. I didn't know what it was. I was like, what are you talking about? You know, so, I mean, so I grew up in the suburbs. I grew up very, very sheltered. Very sheltered. You know? Mm. And so I'm not, you know, when I say I'm from New York, I'm talking about the food. I'm talking about the traffic. I'm talking about the commute. I'm talking about the arts and things like that. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. I'm not talking about no hood. Okay. Okay, so the next that's time that's we taste some pizza or something like that, you can tell me you're from New York. Yes, and I okay. know where to go for New York. The next pizza time, here. well, Italian food. The next time we taste some type of some Italian, Italian food. food, some Jewish food, I know where yeah, to go for that. Jewish food. Yeah, mm. I know where to go. Okay, then you could talk that New York stuff. I know where to go for some West Indian food. Trust me when it comes to food. Okay, Chinatown. I remember Chinatown, they had goats and everything hanging up hanging in, up. The, you, in the restaurant. Saw? Yeah, I was 10 years old. <laughs> I remember that I took remember pictures that? of the high towers when I was 10 or 11 years old. And took pictures of the high towers. The next time I went to New York, well, I went, I went to Jersey. That was uh, 10, about 11 or 12 years ago. Just in case you're wondering, I don't count. Sorry, Linda. Jersey don't count. I'm sorry, go ahead. Jersey. <laughs> I went to Jersey, but that was the first time I was shocked about being up north and I saw so many cows in the suburbs. Oh, yeah, you were out in the country. I was with my cousin. That wasn't even in the, the suburbs. Country. That's like the And then I went to New York again and I saw a bunch of woods when I was working with Kunte, with James Quirles. I was working with him, you know, delivering and stuff like that. And I was in New York, but we was just in and out, in and out. That was... Uh, mm -hmm. 2013 so I couldn't enjoy the city because we was working but I plan on visiting New York and I'm going to tell yeah, you why you come see well, yeah well. I'm going to come why because I don't like you people He's so I'm going to come, go see my family I'm come, no I'm not I'll be there. there you think I'm going to see why are you not going to see my family I'm not going to no deers no raccoons no no possums the rest of my family live in no, upstate New York no hens so no, I told him about the flying turkeys. The, the flying turkeys. turkeys. Brandon Cradell, Chuck Brown will <laughs> not be anywhere. No, you just listen. Will not be anywhere in no woods. I'm um, city. My brother has five acres at the end of the dirt road. And that's where he can keep five acres. He can have all the dirt he wants to. <laughs> But I'm not going there no it's dirt. It's a beautiful view, and especially in the fall. Be, it could be beautiful oh, all the way too. But I'm not going there no deers, no bears, no... You no. get those two. Yeah, no way. Possums. 
No way. Flying and turkeys. Possums. Occasionally a mountain turkeys. lion crosses under the car because it's warm. Well, a mountain lion. Yeah. Only thing you got to say with me is mountain and lion. <laughs> okay? And I'll be lying I'm in a mountain, I'm lying sorry. about a mountain. No, 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 no. You can go. We'll go at a certain time of the year where you won't see 90% of that. It'll be hot. Okay. Well, we'll stay for a day. It's just the imagination of the country. It's country. And I am not being involved or anywhere see. around, anywhere with a bunch see of woods. See what I got to deal with? Anything that don't have any street lights, we're going to have an issue. Oh, anywhere yeah, that you lights. talk about some deers, we're going to have an issue here. You come from a highway to a one, a two lane road. Nowhere and there no deers. One lane road, then there's no dividing in the road, and then it's a dirt road. There could be a dirt road all we want to, but Brandon, Cradell, Chuck Brown would not, Mr. Excitement, would oh. not be as exciting in some woods around a bunch of deers. I'm telling you right now, if I see one, uh, just like what you saw, I'd freak out. <laughs> you know, that was okay. That was handled or whatever. You know, that was handled. But if I see one deer or whatever, that ain't gonna be too good. You'll be fine. And You'll people talk, and I know your brother and your your sister and yeah, my sister the rest of the family go deers. We cook deers. I'll oh, shoot up there. Sure you know, talk deer. about shoot, de shooting deers and and uh. What are they? Coyotes and they all that? They shoot all of that because hunting season starts. Yeah, hunting, hunting season. Hunting season in the country is noisier than the hood for a much longer time because no. those people be shooting all, all dog on night long. That's all you hear. You cannot sleep. I said I could be in the hood and hear less noise. Yeah, because they be hunting all day and all, all night. All day. night yeah. long. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And coming, can we pass through your property so we can go up in the mountains and hunt? Sure, we'll be sure to drop you off something. No, don't drop me off anything. Well, good. <laughs> they ain't dropping me off nothing because I ain't gonna be nowhere <laughs> around them. But anyway, we was just coming over here to tell y'all about, about yeah, us getting to know each other and how we encourage each other. How we kind of sound like each other. But I'm grateful that you sound like what I need you to sound like when I need you to sound like. I can't tell. You was beating the living hell out of me earlier. You was trying to. And what did I do to you? Now you, now you, you want to kiss me. Now you're on Facebook yes, Live. You but just what did I do to hug you? Hug me and kiss me what and everything did I do like to that. You? Well, you just, everything that I said, you went off on. I mean, I cracked one joke and you went <laughs> he off. He says, on. get this. He says, well, you might want to go and wash your. Yeah, because she went to a friend house. You're homeless, so you were at a friend's house. Yeah, you should have asked the, the story was, wash your butt. The story butt. was she was talking about homeless. She's homeless. I did not even She's say that. You I did so. You was talking you about I'm homeless. Today. I'm homeless. That's I all she kept that's saying. That's what I kept saying. I'm homeless. I'm homeless. You keep reminding me that I don't so, have a home. Yeah, I don't so have a home. I'm homeless. People that's homeless don't have a head over their head. Don't have a roof over their head. Okay, so she was like, I'm homeless. I'm homeless. So she went to a friend house to drop off some chicken and stuff like that. Yes, my friend. And she ain't why she le we left she left mama house this morning. I had to get a fresh cut and I uh, had to get my head examined on me. But that's another story. Mm -hmm. Completely. But um completely another story. But anyway, um she left the house and went over to a friend house and took a and uh took some Food over there because right. her mm -hmm. friend's been without food. She's going through a situation. That's another. That's, another that's another a whole another story. But she went over there to be a giver because that's I'm the lover. She's the giver, mm -hmm. and she went over there to give. And um, what happened was, I called her. We talked over the phone. And she was talking about she didn't take no shower over well, I'm coming back. I said, I'm coming back to the house because we yeah, really didn't she's have coming time back to freshen up this morning. And he said, well, you are somebody's house yeah. and you're homeless. Yeah, you're homeless. <laughs> you're going to take a shower anywhere. Take a shower anywhere. Yeah. I'm like, and I'm like, I'll go to the house two times. It don't matter. Say, Can I buy you a shower? It don't matter. I'll go to a grocery store. Yeah. And I'll be like, do you have a shower? Yeah. I need to wash. Yeah. You know, I wash five or six times a day. Yes, he, you know, yes. so therefore I'm like, okay, well, let me tell you something. Can I please use your shower? I don't care if it's at somebody else's job. 
I'm gonna wash my tail. Well, what so I I'm told like, him if was, you left her, the my mama told go, me. Can I say this? Go ahead. The next time that I have to go through something like this, I remember, because this is my first time at it, so I'm a bit of a novice. I'm new. I will remember that if I'm at a friend's house to ask to borrow their shop. Yeah. I just didn't think about it at the time. Yeah, pride is everything. And it's that's somebody not pride. That's for somebody it's on this page. It's called naivete. It's called I ain't know nothing about Hey, I ought to wash my butt someplace because I don't know when I'm going to get the next opportunity yeah, you don't know what to wash my butt. I'm like, but I'm thinking I'm coming back to a place where I could freshen up. So why would I bother my friend to freshen up at her house? Like I said. Because that's supposed to be a friend. It's okay. So but if you ain't got nowhere or you feel that you ain't got nowhere to shower. I didn't say I didn't have anywhere to and shower. You know, you talking to homeless talk. Oh, I'm homeless. And I'll tell you, you talking that talk. You gonna wash your butt any doggone way. You've said the word homeless more than I have. No, I, I yes, no, you have. no. Yes, you have. I beg to differ. Well, in the joking, but you have. No, that's when I say, really. Do you have to keep saying that? No, you, you have, to you keep have saying said that? it numerous times. I haven't said it that much, dear. Last Go night, ahead. I, I, Go ahead. I think Go ahead. I'll be just like this and just sleep in my car. You remember that? No, that's because Angie wanted to yeah, sleep in his car said, and I didn't yeah. want him to sleep. No, I didn't want him to sleep in that car by himself. No, I know that. You were talking about you was going to sleep in, sleep in the car because you was upset. And before we got on because Facebook Live, you was frowning about 10, 20 minutes ago, honey. Didn't I just restart it? We don't like full circle, everybody. And what happened? My friend called me and cheered me up. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay. So sorry. we got on at the wrong. Because you know, I just came over here to just <laughs> hey, just about tell to your be butt alive. Yeah, just what? to run Bunch my of nothing. Mouth so let's, let's go ahead and end it then. So we can. Oh, no. You ain't going to flip on me when we get off this phone. No. No, I'm going to go get somebody. You, you know, mm, us homeless we people gonna be are happy. hungry. You're going to be happy. You ain't going to beat me up when <laughs> no, I get off here. I'm not going to beat you up. I you promise. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Right there. Make them mad. Shoot up. Make them mad. I'm gonna be mad. Go ahead. Make them make them upset. Nobody's gonna be upset. They're not gonna be upset. No, that'd be fine. Okay. Well, thanks for tuning in. You see, Jo on there. Yes. Jo's supposed to be doing. Um, uh, I'm trying to get him on the panel. You know, on the single parent. Yes, phone. we're working. I on might get him on sex parent. status well, and success from a yeah. uh, godly perspective. We're working on the next sex status and success. We That's the great. one who checked me and and told me you wish you. That's quick boy told me he wish he knew me like a like a year ago or what no no like longer than a year ago because mm -hmm. we met like two years ago a year or two years ago and he said that I I be going hard on him I, I need to show him more love and set more of an example well, you, said you know that's a good example. And, and and you know but he's just gonna be hard you don't have to deal and with that tell him you know instead of telling them they need to get like me and be like us. You know, that type of thing. But I understood where it was coming from, man. He made my heart melt. And he gave me a kiss, man. He, he gave me a kiss on the cheek. He thought I didn't realize that, but I about cried. Because, you know, most men, you know, they don't want to show love and affection towards each other. Yeah. Well, that's you know? a new thing. That, I mean, I was looking at an article. I'm a nerd. I was looking at an article about mm -hmm. that. And they were saying that as we've these last couple of generations, we've gotten away from seeing any kind of male physical interaction because it's so associated with a lifestyle. And that's not, that's not, I grew up seeing a dad love my brother, kiss him, give him a hug, you know, family. I just, we got so- Isaiah and Matthew used to kiss each other in the mouth. We got so to the point now where we're so concerned about sexuality and sexual things that any kind of just normal interaction is suspect, which is crazy. That's just a whole nother subject. Yeah, though. because, you know, subject. I know, but I just wanted to put that out there because I want to talk about why do every man have to be gay that shows any type of affection? Like, women can say, and this is this is something I'm gonna really get in. Women oh, can say, let, ahead, women can say, say my yeah. girlfriend. You know, women can say, you know, I'm about to hang out with my girlfriend. But why can't I say I'm about to hang out with my boyfriend or my girlfriend? I think you say girlfriend. You can't say boyfriend. You know what I'm saying? I mean, women say girlfriends. I know. So why can't I say I'm about to hang out with my boyfriend? Why I gotta be gay if I say I'm about to hang out with my boyfriend? Well, don't. Think or why that I gotta be gay? 
If I say I want to hug you or kiss you on the cheek or something like that, why I got to be gay? Why can't I show the same affection that women show? You know, that, that women yeah, show. Women, you know, listen, we, we you know now, that's right? just like me and Marquise. Just, me and Marquise uh -huh. go back since 1982. He's, talk. he's from the valley. You know, but why can't I hug him? That's like my family. That's like my uh, cousin. He's like more of my cousin than anything. Why can't I give him a hug? You can. Society has changed around you, huh? Yeah. And to be honest with you, don't think that women can't get away with it anymore. Because when I was a kid, a woman and a woman could walk down the arm holding hands or even side by side, holding each other's arm and not necessarily think that they were gay either. But you can't do that now. You can barely do that. Or people will sure think you booed up with a new one. So, you know, it, we have become a sexualized society where any kind of physical activity, there's got to be immediate sex going on. Well, it's about to change. It's about to change because most of y'all, some of y'all, no, I ain't going to say most of you, but some of y'all black men's out here, <laughs> some of y'all black men's, <laughs> you need a lot of love. And so I'm going to go around and hug, even if I got to kiss you <laughs> on the cheek or give you a pluck or whatever I got to do. I'm going to love you, man. And I'm telling you that in front of my wife. All right. All right, so be prepared for oh that Brandon or oh that Chucky a little sweet KK. And you're gonna say, No, he just knows he needs to love some of these men. I'm gonna tell and, you something. My you, brother did it one time. I think it was a Father's Day. And he was preaching. My brother's a preacher. A couple of different hats in the church. And he was talking about our dad, who was a fantastic person. And he says, I know a lot of men in this audience haven't had that kind of dad. He said, but I'm here and I'm going to give you a hug. I'll give a hug to any man who feels like he needs it. And if you saw the line, it went outside the church, out into the vestibule, almost out the door of the men who lined up just to get one hug. What does that tell you? We ought to do that. We need to That men that. are, you know, it doesn't have to be a sexual thing to be appreciated by another man. It's just... We, we've allowed society to sexualize everything we do. And that's crazy. That's crazy. And if you, I, you know, I'm always with you. When so you this is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do. What we're going to do. What we're going to do. do. Next week, we're going to start a hug. Uh, like a hug you. You want to do a hug, hug you? Kiss you. We've done that. You know, the city has done No, Danny, a Danny Cook does it, but Danny I want to do, I want to do something I know, but at least with the men. Yeah. No, no, no. You just want men. Yeah, I just want all men. <laughs> okay? And we'll either, either you meet me at the house or either we meet at McDonald's or Hopefully whatever. Hopefully we'll be in the house. Yeah, we'll, we'll be at McDonald's and I'm going to post up, uh, we're going to, you know, make some type of thing as far as I'm giving out hugs and kisses to me. And <laughs> this ought to be funny. Yeah, I'm giving out hugs and kisses to me and um, all around me and, and and then one day you can do women's, you know, however you want to do, but that's natural for women. So, but see, okay, it's not anymore. That's what I'm trying to say. Well, yeah, it's not I mean, natural. Yeah, we still all say kiss my the girlfriend. air next to each other's cheek. <laughs> we do that now. That's yeah, how but, sexualized but, it's gotten. You know what? I people think, don't even connect. Yeah, you're right. You're right. We Strip might press our cheeks and, together. Yeah. I'm telling you, it's changed. Yeah, yeah. Even for women. But I'm just saying, with with women, it was like that. But now, with the men, it's always been like that. You it's know? been like that long ago. Yeah, with, the, with longer. So we're going to make a change. So next Saturday... Hugs and kisses for the men's. All right, well, oh. we're about to get out of here. We had fun talking to y'all about we... getting to know each other. And now she wants to hug and love all up on me. Mm. Goodness mm. gracious, you sure you got to... I'm going to do a buck. No, don't do That's a buck. Don't do a buck. Don't do a buck. I bite it. Don't I, do... I, I, do my, I just so... bite books. Chubby little cheeks. cheeks yeah. uh, bite I bite the living day. But um, that boy got some chubby cheeks. But anyway, um, we're about to go. Uh, we'll probably hit <laughs> Speed Street. Yeah, for um, a little while. When the sun go down and wild out a little bit. Be on Facebook Live. We're really looking for some cookouts because I want to be a scavenger, like she said. 
and eat everybody burgers up, you know, eat everybody you don't burgers. Understand. And hot I'm a, I cook and I barbecue, and I'm not accustomed to being the scavenger. I'm being accustomed to being what? The, the giver. giver. Yeah. Well, I'm accustomed to being the lover. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, <laughs> tomorrow, Will McCray. We'll be in the yes, building. We'll you got building. something special from six to at eight. the conversation piece from six to eight. The buffet is from four to nine. nine. If you ever never met JoJo, go see JoJo's cooking. All you can eat buffet if you're from the military. Twenty five percent off. Yeah, cuz live on here. He always chiming in, showing love. He showed out at the sound last night, from what I heard. Cool. So if you look at it, cuz love will be performing. Look at. Kim Knox, he'll be performing at her event tomorrow around 3 p.m. He up in the, um, all right, so Candice, Tanisha, Tanisha's on here, Tasha, Tasha Jeffrey, Jeffrey's on New Beginnings Men's Squad. I'm going to give him a hug because he's never come to an event <laughs> ever. He just come on. Go see your boy Will McCray, Jeff. All right. But anyway, uh, we love you. We love you. But, but God, God loves, loves you more. more. And to the men's on here. Mm -hmm. <laughs>